What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and today I am wrestling with myself. AEW All Out 2020 is coming at us live this coming Saturday. As I record this, it is two days away and I'm very excited for this show. I think AEW and Dynamite by and large have been a good show. There's been, been a lot of booking hits and misses, ups and downs, but I feel like this All Out show looks pretty solid. They always book the top of the card pretty well on this show, so I'm looking forward to this. There are nine matches total. I want to break down uh, these nine matches and who's going to win and give you guys my preview and predictions for this Saturday's show. So uh, we're starting off with the pre-show. I believe it's on the pre-show. It is the returning Britt Baker versus Big Swole in a tooth and nail, and nail match. Now I've got to, got to admit to you guys, I, don't, I have not seen AEW Dynamite from this past weekend. I just got a new phone last night. My old phone crashed and I spent the night last night during Dynamite reprogramming my new phone and getting it all ready. So I have not seen last night's Dynamite. Uh, it's the first Dynamite that I ever missed uh, live. So um, I don't know what a tooth and nail match is. I, I, I'm sure they described it on the show and explained what it is. I don't know what it is. So I'm going into this one a little blind. Um, not looking forward to the match that much. I know this is going to piss off some of the hardcore fans, but I'm not a big fan of Big Swole at all. Uh, her personality grates on me. I don't like her mic skills. I think she's horrible in the ring, personally. I'm not a fan of her work at all. Uh, that being said, it's good to have Britt Baker back in the ring for the first time in a long time. She's the best personality of the women's division on this show and the most complete woman in this division. Uh, she's done a great job personality-wise, but her ring work is still hit or miss. So as a match, it's not going to be very good, but I think... Um, it's, it's Britt's first match back. She has to win. Bring her back strong with a win here so she can move up the card. Uh, she's a great heel, great personality. I'm loving her work on the mic. So uh, I think Britt wins this match, even though I don't know what a tooth and nail match is. Um, then we go on to the eight matches that are listed on the main card right now. And that is Dark Order, uh, which I think is Brody Lee, Colt Cabana, Eva Luno, and Stu Grayson against Matt Cardona, Scorpio Sky, Dustin Rhodes, and QT Marshall. Uh, this one just kind of thrown on there. It was given two weeks hype. Um, not a big fan of Dark Order as an act. Uh, the roster of Dark Order and the booking of Dark Order has been freaking atrocious on this show. In theory, it's great. Anna Jay is great. Brody Lee is great. I'm glad he's the new TNT champion. But the booking of Dark Order, by and large, has been horrible. Uh, but I do like the eight wrestlers in this match, and it should be a fun match. Fun, fast-paced eight-man tag. Brody just won the TNT belt and looked dominant, hospitalizing Cody two weeks ago. So there's no way I see Dark Order losing here. You got to keep building that brand and making them stronger and stronger so we can finally take them seriously as a threat after all this time of bad booking. So Brody has to get the pin here. Brody can't sell. Brody can't take bumps. Brody has to get the pin here. Uh, so I'm going to say Dark Order wins with a Brody Lee pinfall, uh, and it should be a pretty solid match. Um, in spite of the booking, I like how all eight, all eight of these guys are doing. Uh, Scorpio Sky has been great and interesting to see Matt Cardona in one of his first matches here in AEW. So looking forward to this one, but I think Dark Order wins. Then we have a Broken Rules match. Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. Um, I guess that's just a, a, an ODQ Extreme Rules kind of match. If Matt Hardy loses, he's gone from AEW forever. Um, too soon for this stipulation. I don't see Hardy leaving. Um, as far as I know, he's still signed to a contract uh, for what should be for a while now. He hasn't even been in front of a full crowd yet, so I don't see them getting rid of Matt Hardy unless they want to do some weird stipulation where Matt Hardy gets pinned, but he comes back as Damascus or Broken Matt or Woken Matt or, you know, whatever Matt. He's got multiple personalities, so they could easily get around this uh, stipulation where one of Hardy's personalities leaves and the other one comes back. It would make sense for Guevara to win being the younger, newer talent who you want to get over at the expense of the veteran. But um, because of the loser leave stipulation, I'm not quite sure how they're going to do it. So I'm going to say Matt Hardy gets the win here. I think if they're smart, they would find a way to get Guevara the win. I think he needs it more than Matt. Obviously, Matt's, Matt is Teflon. He's bulletproof. But this should be a fun match. I wish their tables match two weeks ago got more time because they, they, they programmed the show wrong and they ran short on time. So that was just all screwed up. But I think Matt Hardy gets the win here, and I hope this one goes to at least one more match that has a lot of time to develop, because this has been a good feud, nice blood, good intensity. I like both guys, and I want to see Guevara get more of a chance here, but I think Matt wins this match. Then we go to a random thrown-on match with no heat to it. 
I don't want to see this on the show. Uh, Young Bucks versus Jurassic Express. Not a fan of random stuff being thrown on there. There's no reason for this to be on the show. There's no heat. There's no backstory. They just won an eight-man tag a few weeks ago. So it was the, the two winning teams that win the match face it all out for no reason. Uh, I, I don't like this at all. Give this to another match. They should have gave this time to like um, maybe Cage against Archer or um, Darby Allen against Ricky Starks they could have used. Or they could have just gave more time to one of the undercard matches on this show. Uh, I don't like stuff being thrown on with no story. Uh, also, I don't like the Bucks in the ring. They're just spot, spot, spot. They don't have any story behind their stuff. And Luchasaurus' work lately, just all the kicks and stuff and leg slaps he does, I'm not a fan of. This is four guys with potential that could really be great, but lately I haven't been impressed by their stuff, and I don't like this being put on the main card for no reason. Uh, I think the Bucks get the win here because they're angling for a feud with FTR, and they've been doing the stuff with FTR and um, Page and Omega. For the last several weeks, they're the main attraction here. A loss is not going to hurt the undercard team of Jurassic Express. So I think the Bucks get the win in what's going to be one of those fun car crash spot matches, if you like that sort of sort of thing. I don't. I'm not a fan of that style of no selling and just Canadian destroyers and super kicks all over the place. So I'm not really into this one, but I think you guys, if, you, if you're watching this, you might like this one. So hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus get uh, a nice chance to, to shine here. Then we have the 21-man Casino Battle Royal for a world title shot. Uh, they've announced about, I think, 17 people so far. There's four spots open. I'm not going to run down all, all 17 names. But of the names we've been given so far, if there's not some big mystery opponent, I hope uh, in the four spots that are left, we get a couple of mysteries. I wouldn't mind seeing a couple of surprises here, like if maybe like Miro Rusev is available or uh, Zicky Dice from NWA comes in or somebody else from NWA, like, like a Nick Aldis can come in as a surprise since they're kind of working together now. That'd be kind of nice. Wouldn't mind seeing a few surprises here. But of the guys they've hyped for this, I think the one that needs it most is Lance Archer. Archer came in a house of fire, faced off against Cody, lost the first TNT title match, squandered around with bad booking and silly stuff with Jake for a long time, and just now he's getting back into being uh, focused on again. So I think he could really use the focus here. I think uh, Archer getting a big win for the first time in his career against the non-squash match, could be important for him. So I uh, I hope and I think Archer could win here. Wouldn't mind seeing it. Uh, I know it's heel on heel, but Archer and Cage have been teasing stuff between Archer, Cage, Taz, and Jake for a few weeks. So I would not mind seeing those two agile, big, intense guys going at it in the future. Cage is another guy that could win here, but I think he has a stronger mouthpiece in Taz. So I'm going to say Archer wins this, this one, which should be a fun match, and I hope there are surprises. <clears throat> then we have the one I'm looking forward to the least on this show. I know some of you guys like Orange Cassidy. I do not. Uh, Jericho versus Orange Cassidy in their in their third uh, tiebreaker match, mimosa match. The winner has to throw the loser into a vat of mimosa, uh, orange juice, and champagne. Uh, I think Jericho is being wasted here. Uh, I know the idea is for Jericho to put over a newer talent to get an unknown guy into the eyes of the mass appeal. I understand that. But they chose the wrong guy here. Uh, Orange Cassidy has always been presented as a comedy opening match guy. And he has not taken this feud seriously. And I know that wrestling is meant to be funny sometimes for the newer generation. But I think if you're a comedy job uh, entry level guy, being put in there with Jericho is insulting enough. But then to be put in there in a feud with Jericho and still not take the feud seriously while you're in the feud with Jericho not only doesn't elevate Cassidy, but also hurts Jericho. It just makes him look like a comedy guy. So they're taking this main event name name value guy, who is their biggest name they have in the company, and making him look like an entry-level comedy guy who's doing orange juice matches. So I don't like this. I think the booking here has been bad. They're wasting Jericho. They could have given this spot to another up-and-coming young talent who the audience doesn't know yet, like a Jungle Boy or a Darby Allin or a, um, you know, e even a Wardlow or an MJF who's a heel, um, maybe like, a, you know, Ricky Starks or, you know, th this could have been the Kip Sabian, any number of young talents who you wanted to make uh, feel more special. Uh, I know that the stipulation is a comedy stipulation, which makes no sense here. I think Jericho has to win. I think Jericho losing twice to Orange Cassidy is silly. Uh, but because there's no pins and because it is a comedy ending where someone goes into the orange juice it would make sense that the face would beat the heel and you'd have Jericho drowning in the orange juice and, and flopping around like a fish. 
uh, making Cassidy get the big pop, but I, it doesn't make sense. You know, the, the stipulation is made for a face to be to heel here at the end, but it's Jericho. He can't lose to this comedy job guy who's not going to be going any higher on the card. This is not going to help Cassidy, and Jericho losing is going to further hurt his stock in the eyes of the longtime hardcore fans. Uh, so I, I'm going to pick Jericho to win this, and I hope it's painless. And I hope Jericho moves on to something bigger and better. And if they're going to put over a star, make it a Jungle Boy or Luchasaurus or someone like that. Uh, next, we have a match that I am looking forward to a lot. It is the for the uh, AEW Women's Championship. Hikaru Shida is defending her title against the NWA Women's Champion, Thunder Rosa. I'm glad these companies are working together. More of these companies need to work together. The NWA has been great. They presented strong women's wrestling for a while now. AEW needs more strong women's wrestlers. So now we have this partnership. I love Thunder Rosa. I love this matchup. I love the packages they've done for this matchup. I'm looking forward to this like crazy. Uh, Sheeta's a good technician. Thunder Rosa is excellent all around. Both sides need this. I'm super excited for this. This was good booking. Well done. I think Sheeta's going to win here just because Sheeta's the full-time uh, current champion that's contracted. Thunder Rosa is not a contracted talent, and we don't know if we're going to see her again going forward or not, or how much this working relationship goes forward. So I think just um, knowing that Sheeta is the AEW lady that's staying, that's sticking around, she's going to retain her title here. I can't see Thunder Rosa holding both championships here. So it should be a great match, but I think Sheeta retains. Then we have for the tag titles, uh, Adam Page and Kenny Omega defend against FTR. I think FTR finally takes this. They've been teasing uh, the Page and Omega split for a long time. They've teased Page now being on the outs with the Elite. They've teased Omega being more aggressive and like starting to kind of go heel, so you don't know which one's going to turn on each other. I think Omega turns on Page here. Page is down on his luck. Page is friends with FTR. Omega's been more aggressive. I think Omega turns on Page and finally ends this long storyline. It's had a nice arc and nice build to it. I've liked the odd couple Page and Omega stuff. Even though I don't like Omega, I've loved the storyline. I love FTR. They're hot. They're new. They're fresh. They work a better style than the rest of the teams in this division. They're the only ones that work body parts and slow down and actually have storytelling in their tag team matches in AEW. I think it's going to be a great match. I think FTR should win the belts. They're new. Like I said, uh, they haven't been around long. they got name value. They're wrestling a better style than all the other teams. They should be the leaders of this division, teaching these young new kids how to wrestle. Uh, so FTR get the win here, and I think Omega turns on Paige, but either way, that is the end of this team. And Paige and Omega can go on to feud with each other, and FTR can hold the belts and go on to the Young Bucks match. So good storytelling all around here. Then for the main event, the one I'm most looking forward to on the show, John Moxley defends the world title against MJF, and John Moxley cannot use his paradigm shift in the main event. It's hard to say there's going to be two title changes on this show, um, this is the hardest one to call for me because Moxley has been hot as champion. He hasn't really lost yet. Um, MJF hasn't really lost yet either in any singles matches. So, so it's two really hot undefeated guys kind of going at each other. Uh, you want both guys to win. Mo Moxley has been a, a good, unpredictable, solid mic worker, solid ring worker. MJF has been the best heel in the business. He's the number one heel in wrestling. He's a great talker. He shouldn't lose for a long time. You don't want to see either one of these guys lose. They're two of my personal favorites in the company. Um, but I think the finish is going to come into play here. I think it is time for MJF to become world champion and become the first non-name value guy that holds the AEW title going forward. I think that uh, Moxley is going to go for the paradigm shift at some point in this match. And either the referee catches him and slows it down or Moxley rethinks it, thinks about it, and stops himself at some point, which causes MJF to be able to cheat or roll up or do something sneaky to win the belt. So this, so Moxley has the match won, goes for his finisher, gets foiled because he can't use it, and then winds up uh, MJF winds up using heel tactics to win the title. So this should be a great match. It's going to have a good story. Moxley's a good wrestler. MJF's a great storyteller. This should be a good one. But I think we walk out of here with MJF and FTR both winning, all the initial guys winning the championships going forward in what should be a really good product to capitalize on. So I'm looking forward to this show by and large. Um, what do you guys think? Um, how are these predictions that I've made? Who do you predict to win? Give me your predictions in the comments below. And which match are you most looking forward to in this show? Who do you want to see win? Who do you think is going to win? And would you guys like to see my review? If you would, um, on Sunday, I'll be covering the review. I'm staying at a friend's Saturday night, but Sunday morning I'll be writing this up and covering it 
for ProWrestlingJournal.com. So go to ProWrestlingJournal.com to see my uh, feedback on All Out on Sunday. Take care, guys. Enjoy the matches.